Oh, well, yeah, you know, I mean, uh, absolutely. I think few people really realize the extent to which uh, badminton was entrenched uh, in the San Francisco nightlife of the early 1920s. I mean, uh, most people around the country at this time we were, were, were breathing the sinful air of a jazz club, you know, uh, swilling bootleg hooch, uh, you know, spending their leisure time watching planes crash through barns. But, uh, you know, the flappers and gents of San Francisco, they could be found down at their neighborhood badminton court, slapping the shuttlecock around, breathing the uh, clean bay air, you know, swigging bootleg hooch. Uh. In 1923, model train mogul and crude businessman W.B. Mustache sought to create the first professional badminton league. At an early age, W.B. Mustache was considered a badminton prodigy. At the age of seven, Mustache was already competing in adult tournaments. The possibilities were endless. However, working on his father's farm in Iowa one summer, Mustache fell victim to a terrible tractor accident that left him with a crippling case of gonorrhea of the throat. Mustache would concentrate his efforts on his second love, model trains. Within three short years, Mustache had made millions and found himself the top model train producer in the world. Well, yeah, well, you know, uh, you know, Mustache's only escape from the painful bouts of gonorrhea of the throat that he endured was to watch the sport of badminton, you know, the game he had once loved as a child and could no longer play. Uh, he used his millions he made in the model train industry to recruit the top players who could watch them at his leisure. You know, that became the Gentleman and Scholars League of San Francisco. Archibald McPete was a world-renowned butterfly catcher. Introduced to the game of badminton by a childhood friend, McPete quickly became a top badminton player. Winning the first championship match in 1923 and the next two championship matches, McPete went undefeated in 1925. Archibald Scoops McPete was a star W.B. Mustache was looking for to center his league around. Uh, well, you know, uh, Archie really did resemble a butterfly when he got out there on that court. I mean, you know, he used to say, uh, uh, I resemble a butterfly when I play this fair sport of badminton, but when I strike that shuttlecock, you'll feel as though a bee stung you. And uh, so, you know, years later, when um, the Islamist Muhammad Ali said, you know, he had his whole floating beasting bit, uh, that was a tribute to Scoops McPete. Not very many people know or believe that. At first, McPete enjoyed the attention that came with being the star of the Gentlemen and Scholars League of San Francisco. But McPete's private life was brought into the limelight and shown him to be more of a controversial star off the court than many had been led to believe. Well, well you know, McPete was a family man. Uh, he did love his hooch and cockfighting, but as any respectable family man of the time would tell you, you couldn't really enjoy a good cockfight without a considerable amount of money riding on it. He, uh, he did eventually succumb to his gambling debts and drinking problems. McPete's off-the-court activities began to take a toll on his performance on the court. McPete followed his unbeaten season in 1927 by going 13-42 and 42 the following season. In 1929, McPete seemed to have cleaned up his act and returned to dominance. Losing only one match that season, McPete breezed through the championship tournament and would face rookie star Willie Wilkshire in the championship match. Yes, McPete was heavily favored entering the Wilkshire match. He was back in tip-top shape and Willie Wilkshire didn't really even know how to play the game. All of his opponents up to that point had forfeited. The only match Willie Wilkshire played in the entire tournament was the championship game. In a shocking turn of events, McPete lost to Wilkshire in three straight sets. Despite having the best serve in the league, McPete double faulted a record 30 times and never led in a single game. A shocking end to a near flawless season by McPete. Yeah, well, you know, there were some frivolous accusations printed in the dailies, of course, uh, you know, that Archie had uh, thrown the match to pay off a gambling debt, so on and so forth. Wilkshire was involved with the mob. Uh, you know, it was all just hearsay, really. It, Archie just had a, had a bad match. Badminton's son had fallen, and two years later, the Gentlemen and Scholars Badminton League of San Francisco had folded. It was the end of an exciting era in San Francisco, and the end of an innocence in American sports.